This gets really dark, so just buckle up, okay? Even if God were to reveal himself to be real, hey, I'm here, watch what he says next. I, re I wholeheartedly believe this. We're carrying God. It's one thing to just like drip from the faith and be like, nah, I don't really know, man. I haven't gone to church in a while. Like I'm trying to figure it out. It's another thing to be this man just in one breath said, you got to understand it. You got to respect it. We got to extend empathy. And then in the same breath. Bruce Lawn. All right, ladies and gentlemen, one of my uh, favorite theological Christian hip hop artists was a part of a collective called the Cross Movement. His name is Fanatic and Cross Movement generally made, how did Dr. Eric Mason tell me to describe it? Theologically lofty music, okay? They weren't all Calvinist. I misspoke when I said that in the video, um, but they were theologically lofty and weighty in their content, most of their content. And they ended up blazing an entire movement and they actually signed Lecrae early on. He did his first two albums and then he pivoted to Rebel and it was kind of like this reformed and restless surge that uh, Christian hip-hop took over. And the fanatic was not necessarily a part of that, as far as I know. I don't know where he was theologically, but it was a high emphasis on theology. He went to seminary, on uh, taking the Bible as literally as possible, on presuppositional apologetics, on creation, the creation story being literal, yada, yada. Well, recently, the fanatic deconverted from the faith. He wrote a whole book about it. Uh, Dr. Michael Brown challenged him to a debate. He doesn't want the smoke. That's neither here nor there. Um, but there was this interesting conversation that he had with a podcast called My Vision Podcast. And this is kind of like a deconversion, deconstructionist corner for a bunch of people that have left the faith. And they're, they're talking about this conversation. It's a two and a half hour, two, and, two hour and 15 minute conversation. I listened to the whole thing thinking I was going to be challenged in my faith, somehow I was going to see something or hear something like, oh, I never thought about this as a reason to not be a Christian. Heard nothing. Same old washed up type of thinking. If anything, I walk away listening, consuming this sort of stuff, uh, very in, in, invigorated and inspired by my faith. But there was this one little subtle thing that uh, the host snuck in that I just found so so disingenuous. And spoiler alert, like he deconverted because he had trouble with the Old Testament Genesis literal account of, of creation. In my opinion, like there's so many different views on the creation story from all kinds of different perspectives. And Dr. Michael Brown did a video uh, on a Vocab Malone's channel debunking straight from his book, offered to debate him. I don't think he wants to debate him. Um, I would love to see the debate. I would do everything I can to help facilitate the debate. I don't, I don't think he really wants to smoke. And so anyway, what happens with a lot of these folks who deconvert is they go from this very like hands-off approach to being just as dogmatic and zealous and certain about whatever their new ideology is. They were usually like this as Christians. They were very weighty in their theology and they were very certain with the things they believed. And then you pull on one thread and everything kind of falls apart. I see a pattern here personally, and it's going to be exhibited here. It's one thing to just like drift from the faith and be like, nah, I don't really know, man. I haven't gone to church in a while. Like I'm trying to figure it out. It's another thing to be an enemy of the gospel. It's another thing to be an enemy of the gospel. It's another thing to say, I was so team this. And then you, you know, it's like, it's like gang members who jump to a different set, right? Like that's the energy that this is on. And that's to me, I, 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 I don't, I don't respect it. Right. Especially when you're very vague and you tiptoe around the reasons. And then when we finally get to the reasons, it's like, oh, bro, like we didn't settle this a decade ago. But you just were in your own little bubble of your own little, you know, institutions that like you didn't open up to anybody else. And by the time you did, you thought they were too liberal and then you checked out. That's my assessment of this overall podcast. Now, let's jump into this clip because I found this, this clip extremely interesting. I, re I wholeheartedly believe this. We're carrying God. We're mm. carrying this ancient, I believe God is an ancient hypothesis. I believe at one time God was the best hypothesis that they could come up with. I still would not say throw God out as a hypothesis. Right. It's a hypothesis at best. But at some point I just said, you know what? I'm not going to carry this anymore. If God, if God lives, if God speaks, he should be God enough to do it. He did. The whole Jesus predicting his death and resurrecting and then leaving behind reliable New Testament documents. He did, he did just that. He did just that. He did just that. It's, hypothesis, uh, but he, it's much more than a hypothesis, but he did just that. And even still, with all the signs, there were people who still wouldn't believe. So yeah, I'm with you. That's why, yeah. that's why it's, 
cognitive dissonance and and just honesty and mm. like when you are hitting it man it's yeah. i wish you know i can understand why people still believe mm. and you and you could see that and you ha- and you should respect that i could understand why people still believe watch how this thought gets unpacked right and by the way the virtue that's valued any of these people i don't care who it is Fill in a blank. Your favorite Christian who deconstructed, you'll notice one theme. They've they, 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 the, the value and the virtue that they hold of highest esteem now is not restraint, is not delaying gratification, is not truth, is not doing the right thing. The, 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 the value they hold the highest is honesty. Honesty, authenticity, right? You, you'll hear this over and over again. All of them say it. Uh, J- Joseph Solomon, all of them talk about honesty, authenticity, being real, being raw, Right? And not restraint, not not delaying gratification, not doing the right things, not keeping all of my ideas to myself sometimes because they're not always true. My honesty is not. Honesty, authenticity. I got to be the real me, right? But listen to this point. He says, I understand why people still believe we have to respect that, right? Now, now, now I'm going to let him flesh this out. Watch this. I think this. you disagree with the conclusion. You, you got to relate. You got to empathize. I'm an extra addict. Seven years off. I was injecting. Mm-hmm. I don't look at it and go, how the hell dare you hmm. injecting drugs into your body? Why are you sniffing that stuff? Why are you? I know what it's like. Hmm. I legitimately empathize. I understand. So my point is, is we should do better in hmm. trying to relate and empathize. At the same time, if only they could understand. You know what I'm saying? You wish they could understand. <laughs> This man just in one breath said, you got to understand it. You got to respect it. We got to extend empathy. And then in the same breath, compared people who are are still believers and followers of Christianity to be drug addicts. The sheer degree of complete arrogance to say that and like and and, and fanatics like, mm hmm. Yeah, what we know what it's like to be off of drugs because religion was, and maybe religion was your drug. Maybe you didn't really have an encounter with the living God. Maybe it was a drug for you. But to conflate, am I bugging? Help me, am I tripping? Or is this just an awful parallel that just shows an amount of lack of self awareness and just arrogance that is so tone deaf to anyone you're going to try to. Ad- allegedly try to reach potentially try to reach to bring over to your side right like am i bugging help me out it's so disingenuous it's so disingenuous like we got to be empathetic we got it this is yo this is no different than the people they claim are trying to do conversion therapy on the alphabet community it's literally it's literally the same thing that frustrates you about christians is the same thing right Rusan, to be fair from his perspective we are not sober-minded yeah we're the drug addicts in the in the metaphor. <laughs> we're the we're the drug addicts. That's a crazy parallel, fam. That's an that's an insane parallel to 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 say people of faith, people of faith are the drug addicts. They're looking at me and they're going, oh, one day he'll get it. One day he'll come back. And I tell all of them like, combined, mm. I've forgotten more about the Bible mm. than you have ever learned about it. And you're mm. telling me that mm. one day you're gonna get it. Like mm. I'm gonna get it. I said this is. This man said, combined, I forgot more about the Bible. <laughs> it's narcissistic. Mm. Anyway, uh, back to you, brother. I want to hear what you have to say. I'm just... It's narcissistic. <laughs> it's Yo, if this is in projection, I don't know what is. It's narcissistic, bro. The sheer irony and the fact that Brady Goodwin just sat, this is what happens when you get into your echo chamber. And if you know, if I, and I listen to this dude's story, it's the same thing. It's the, I was a, he was an actual Calvinist. He was a five point Calvinist. It's the same thing. It's the same type of thinking. It's the same fundamentalist, radical, Calvinistic theology over everything else type of thinking. It's just inverted. The dogma is just inverted. They just switch. You just you just took the jersey and you reversed it. Tell me I'm lying. I'm relating and I'm trying yeah, yeah, to vibe yeah. with you here. I've heard your testimony before. I'm relating time. and I'm I trying just, to vibe with you I here. Come through the screen and, and just hug you like brother. I feel you because there's so much to like just to this idea of how real it, it was to me. How real my desire is to see other people in the same way I wanted to see people freed from sin and death. Right. I want to see people freed from ancient ideas, from ancient ways of 
of understanding the world and understanding yourself that to me, I'm looking at it now and say that was some of the most unhealthy self-talk you could have ever given yourself. Bro, all the ideas uh, that were ancient are the very bedrock of Western society. The very bedrock of Western ethics, morality, anything that we're seeing in our context is borrowing, is borrowing from God and specifically the New Testament ethic down to our freaking laws. We got a law called the Good Samaritan Law, inspired by what? The parable of the Good Samaritan. You are standing on the very foundations that you're trying to dismantle because you got enlightened. It's such hogwash and it's so disingenuous. Look at the world before Jesus came. Look at the value of human life before Jesus arrived on the scene. Look at how babies were treated. Look at how the elderly were treated. Look at how the Romans did these the Romans did these things, the Greeks, these ancient ideas, the ancient ideas that literally everything in the West is built on. This is goofy talk. This is this is I got into another echo chamber around a bunch of people that think just like me. And now I think I have all the answers and I have all the certainty, just like I did back in the day when I was a Christian and couldn't nobody tell me nothing. I listened to this whole thing. It was really frustrating. But check out, the, check out, check out, check out their issue. This gets darker, by the way. I remember, uh, you know, Paul Tillich and the liberal theologians I was trained to, to stay away from. Yes, me too. What, you know, both Notice they were trained to stay away from certain people. Probably because these people had non-literal six days of creation views on the Genesis account. I'm almost certain of that. I believe that was the thread that he pulled at, right? And so, th again, this is a part of, this, is a this, isn't, this isn't Christianity. This is a very specific type of Christianity that people tend to deconvert from. I mean, what they would say is the whole purpose of humanity is to learn to live authentically. And learning to live authentically is understanding that we just don't have control over these things. And yeah, maybe we've created a God to give us a sense of control to regain some sort of, but at the end of the day, if you ever learn to live authentically, you're going to embrace the, accept and embrace the fact that we just don't know some things. So live authentically. What did I say earlier? What is the value that is placed over all things? What is the new, what is the new North Star? Be, be your authentic self. Be your true self. Be as authentic as you can be. Honesty above, all, above every other virtue. And we just can't control some things. But then like you said, Derek, there are a ton of things we can control that humanity, human life should be about how do we get mastery over the things that we can control ourselves, our passions, uh, whether it be our democracy or our form of government. Like there are things that we're not as helpless as we'd like to make it seem, uh, but relying on a God puts us in that, you know, back in that corner. It sounds like he's never read Matthew chapter 25, the parable of the talents. There's repeatedly stuff about being faithful with the time, talent, and treasure that you have on this side of eternity all throughout the New Testament and all over the Proverbs. Literally, the Proverbs is a book about principles, about the things you can control to control, right? Like, who has this fatalistic view of, of the world to relinquish all control, right? It's usually people that are very, very, very obsessed with eschatology and the end of days, or it's usually hardline radical fundamentalists that are locked in on their specific view of their specific camp, when Christianity is so much broader than that. The gospel is so much broader than that. You have said so many very, very to the heart points in this so far i'm quite impressed with the with the story i have never heard it before um so you're, you're you're studying you find out john walton finds an apology i'm not gonna let me not use the word apologetic let me be fair because i think mm -hmm. john walton has some sophisticated ancient near eastern understandings of trying mm -hmm. to compare genesis to other texts and mm -hmm. he's right doing so but it, it, it divorces genesis from having to be caught up in that debate for purposeful reasons exactly. we don't want genesis to be in competition with science because we know the evidence the empirical data is on the side of observer observational fossil records, and you name it, versus what we're trying to understand Genesis as. So mm. we need to go back to what it meant and right. compare it to ancient Near Eastern literature and show it's not ex nihilo cosmology. Right. Um, right. You name it, the list goes on. Yep. John Walton's on the table. You talk about Peter Inns. Is there any other uh, scholars? Uh, and maybe you can lead up to that while you're studying and comparing it to different scholars. You've kind of discovered myth vision at some point too. But uh, yeah. it'd be interesting <laughs> to hear how that comes in. Yeah. Um, so the book that I wrote is actually me arguing with John Walton and John C. Collins. Matt Delahunty said the same thing that I said. He said, it's not the problem of evil that does it for me. It's the problem of divine hiddenness. So his issue isn't the problem of evil. It's the problem of divine hiddenness. Now, I just reacted to a clip from The Chosen. And what was their issue when he went back to Nazareth? They wanted him to be more overt and more specific. 
but not just overt and specific. They needed him to perform a magic trick for them. They needed a sign and wonder. And they're like, you're not going to give your own town signs and wonders? And you're claiming to be the Messiah? This is the same exact issue. This is the same issue. Divine hiddenness. God, if you're really God, Jesus, if you're really the Messiah, why don't you do a magic trick for us? Come on, Jesus, do a magic trick. It's the same exact, it's the same exact argument. Why, why is God seemingly so hidden from creatures that he says he wants a relationship with? So then get back to what you said about the practical joke. Even if God were to reveal himself to be real, just, hey, look, I'm here, but now you're not going to see me. I'm going again. This gets really dark, so just buckle up, okay? Even if God were to reveal himself to be real, hey, I'm here, watch what he says next. I have such a problem with putting humanity in this predicament such that we have all these all this confusion about which religion is real. And even in the same religion, what should we believe? So that there's all this division and all this confusion and all this, that if you're the being who, ins who your bright ideal... By the way, where all that d division and confusion comes, that comes from God or does that come from people? That don't come from God. That comes from people, right? But listen to what he says next. It's kind of wild. So this, I don't know that I want to spend eternity with you. <laughs> like, yeah. I don't know what else you got planned that just might be as chaotic as this. Even if God was real and even if God revealed himself to them, I don't know if I want to spend eternity with you. Well, then God has to answer to you. Not only God got to do a miracle and reveal himself. God got to then God got to then sit there and give you all the answers. <laughs> he he needs to be subservient to you and, and your morality and doing things. Again, the level of of just right the lack of self-awareness of how wild this sounds. I don't know if they just think no one's going to listen to this stuff. This is over the top. <laughs> let me let, let, let's listen to what Derek says then. What is this? Yeah, I'd, I'd need a long sit down conversation and he'd have to kind of explain those things and how it I, I God would have to explain himself to Derek. <laughs> I need a long sit down conversation and God, you're going to have to explain yourself to me. Wow. <laughs> this is like so I watched this like genuinely amused. Like this is funny. This is funny. Like the yes, the sheer audacity, the detachment of how, how cringeworthy some of these statements are comparing people who are followers of Jesus to people who are drug addicts, right? Like, it, it's just, it's just, it's just, it's, 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 it, this could be an SNL skit for all I care. This is why we build our faith on, on the rock, right? You don't build it on a sand. You don't build it on hardcore black and white binary thinking of you having to have all the answers and, right? Like, you, you, you build your rock on Jesus. And then when you build it, you look at church history and you look at what what are the essentials that we do all have in common that that, that aren't very confusing. And, and, and then you don't start excluding people based on those things. You don't start excluding people well because this group over here they have a different um, a, a different view of this or they got a different view of that. No, no, no. You say, well, what are the things we all agree on? And if we all agree on said things, the earliest creed, right? For example. The Apostles' Creed, right? Whatever, wherever you want to draw the line, and then you, you say, okay, everyone who's, who's in on this is in on this, right? So you build your life, you build your faith on Jesus, not on presuppositional apologetics or Calvinism or needing an answer to every question. I mean, I don't know. So yeah, anyway, I watch these conversations. I'll, 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 I've been listening to some of Joseph Solomon's videos and texting with him a little bit. I'm just, just like, man, this is, uh, this is, I'm just so not. It's moved like in the slightest. I walk away like, man, I'm really happy. I'm a Christian. I'm really happy. I'm a follower of Jesus. I'm really happy. I sorted this stuff out 10 years ago. Hey, this clip is from our daily after party stream. If you enjoyed it, consider signing up for our Patreon community for only $5 a month. Will you get access to the replays of our daily after party streams, as well as the uncut extended versions of our podcast? Discord access that's private and a discount code for our merch store, only $5 a month. And ultimately, it's the best way to help us contextualize the gospel of Jesus using media, podcasting, and of course, YouTube. The link for that is in the description or in the pinned comment. The perks are amazing. You should get on there. It's only $5 a month. I'll see you over there, all right? Peace.